Okay, so now we've looked at the energy transfer or the energy flux due to an electromagnetic wave anywhere in space. So if we expect electromagnetic waves to be able to carry energy, they should also be able to carry momentum. And this means that they should be able to apply a force to another object. So just as an object would feel a force being exerted on it as a result of momentum transfer from another object, um, this also works in terms of our electromagnetic waves. So first of all, what is momentum in this respect? So we're using, uh, we need to use the relativistic equation of energy um, as EM radiation does travel at uh, the speed of light. Okay, so the relativistic equation of uh, energy, um, energy squared, um, is equal to the usual mc squared plus that of the momentum times c, all squared. Now, we know that photons have no mass, so this uh, excludes the first term. Um, so all we're left with is this equation here, where the energy is equal to the momentum times speed c. So um, we can quickly rearrange this to get momentum. So we get the energy on c. Now, just before we calculated that the energy flux of an EM wave is the Poynting vector, which we can see up here at the top, so if we wanted to get the momentum flux, it is simply just the Poynting vector divided by c. So before we go any further, let's look at the units of the momentum flux equation here. So the Poynting vector has units of watts per meter squared, and c has units of meters per second squared. So if we then do a quick dimensional analysis, we find out that the units of the momentum flux are watts seconds per meters cubed, which uh, becomes uh, joules per meters cubed, becoming newton meters per meters cubed, becoming newtons per meters squared, which, uh, funny enough, happens to be the dimensions of pressure. So what we can tell from the momentum flux is that we are actually dealing with a radiation pressure. Okay, so the equation that we have up here is uh, assuming that all of the radiation that hits our box or area is uh, being fully absorbed. So the light comes in and that's it. So for um, a fully absorbed scenario, um, the momentum flux is equal to the pointing vector on C. However, if we were to uh, look in the case that the radiation is completely reflected, uh, so shown here in the purple, we'd actually get the case where the fully reflected equation is actually equal to twice that of the fully absorbed. Okay, so let's have a go at actually uh, using the uh, radiation pressure equations or the momentum flux equations here. Um, so let's look at what the radiation pressure would be if we held our hand outside in the sun. So the radiation from the sun that uh, reaches the surface through the atmosphere transfers radiation at about a thousand watts per meter squared. So this is equal to the magnitude of a Ponte vector, also the energy flux. Okay, so if we, well, hands aren't totally reflecting or totally absorbing, so we're gonna estimate the pressure um, the radiation pressure as being just equal to the Ponte vector on C. Um, so uh, we can substitute values into this fairly simply. So 
So we get a pressure of about 3 by 10 to the minus 6 newtons per meter squared. Uh, <laughs> 10 to the minus 6 is pretty small, but let's uh, keep going with this. Um, so what we need to do now is to work out how much force would we actually feel. Force is the pressure over what area it's being applied to. So uh, looking at my hand here, it's probably, let's pretend it's a square. Uh, so it's probably about 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Um, good point for that. Um, so the area of my hand is about 0.02 meters squared. Um, so, and then to calculate the force, which is about equal to six by 10 to the minus eight newtons. Now that seems like a very small number and it really is a small number. So um, the, the pressure in your hand is about this much just from solar radiation, but the pressure that you feel on your hand just due to gravity, so the force due to gravity is about two newtons. So we don't really notice the um, radiation pressure.